Welcome to the Grounded in Simplicity podcast, where we are helping moms get back to the basics and learn to find joy in being less busy. I'm Bonnie from The Not So Modern Housewife, and I am joined with my friend Danielle from The Rustic Elk. This week, we are talking about getting over the winter blues because we've survived the holidays. Now we need to decompress. Is it as bad down there as it is here? Like it's always dark here in the winter. Um, it's not as bad. And we do get about an hour more of sunlight than what I'm used to up in Ohio. So instead of getting dark at like 4.30, it's getting dark at 5.30. Um, and it's not, it is overcast right now. Um, but this is our gardening season. So it's actually like not bad. We're not getting like the really bad thunderstorms every day. It's if it's overcast, um, it has a tendency to hold the heat in more. So our overcast days are actually our warmer days. The really, the really clear skies are our colder days because there's nothing to like hold that heat in. Right. So it's really, well, it's really the, pretty. It's the same here, but, but it's a lot colder. <laughs> I mean, 40s cold. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got to put, put on a jacket. <laughs> We're like running around in shorts in 40 degree weather. <laughs> You know what? Even when I was in Ohio, I was not running around in shorts and 40 degree no, weather. My Maybe 60. Will. My kids You're, will. Yeah, well, yeah. my kids will be running around naked in 30 degree weather. So whatever. <laughs> They're weird. Yeah, I um, I think uh, getting outside, even if it's not bright daylight, you know, like a clear day, I think you mm-hmm. still get some of that vitamin D. Like even up here, you know, we have to be bundled up, but, you know, your face is uncovered. So it, it helps a little bit. I know it helps me to get out in the fresh air, even if there's not a lot of sunlight, just to kind of brighten my mood. Yeah. I mean, for me, um, even, and like, I'll notice some of this, um, in any of my like busy periods or even in the summer when we're not spending a lot of time outside being inside all day and like kind of being stagnant and not moving. Um, it really does like affect your mood and affects your energy levels. So and I'm, I mean, I've, I've got to get better about this. So just getting out and going for a walk and getting that fresh air, but getting the body moving. Cause we're like, we're meant to stay in motion. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even as we get older and stuff, you know, they, they say that, um, you know, the people who continue moving, continue doing like those daily walks or just staying active, whatever that activity level looks like. Um, they're the ones who tend to have fewer issues with dementia and just stay healthier overall. I've known so many folks who, you know, they retire and within a couple years of retiring, they have a heart attack and die because it's just, I don't know if it's like not having, feeling like you have a purpose anymore, or if it's just the fact that they just, they go home and just, they stop being as active every day. They stop getting out and, you know, doing things every day and just sit around. Right. I think I, I like that we have animals, even though we just have chickens and rabbits, just because I have to get out. I make my kids go out and we have to, in the winter, we have to go out more really, because I have to go out and change their water because it freezes and I don't have mm-hmm. to use water heaters and all that stuff out there and go get the eggs. So they don't freeze and you know, all those different things. And I think it helps because I have to go out and we used to, that used to be what we did before everything was industrialized and going to a job, we would all have to work outside regardless of the weather. So. Right. Well, and that is one thing, like when I was in Ohio, I was still outside all winter. I was in the barn. So it's not like I was like out in the elements. Um, but as long as I stayed moving, I mean, there would be a lot of times that I would take my jacket off in the barn because I mean, I had, you know, a sweatshirt on or whatever underneath. Um, but I don't have a draft because, you know, we would put like bales of hay along the um, barn doors so that the, you know, the draft didn't come in and everything help insulate the barn. And I would start to sweat because I'm just, I'm out there and I'm working and I'm staying active. Right. And when I get in that frame of mind, like I have to keep myself outside and keep myself going. Cause I know as soon as I go inside and sit down, all my momentum is gone and I'm not getting anything else done. Right. What well, what's that saying? There's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothes, or you know, something like that. Oh, I don't know if I've heard that. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, I, I know it's when the sun shines. Right. I know it's something like that because you 
like when we lived in Montana, it doesn't matter if it's 30 below zero, people are still out doing things and, you know, being outside. It's a very outdoor oriented place to be, Mm -hmm. even when it's super cold versus here, everybody wants to come inside and bundle up, you know, bundle under blankets on their couch and just veg. And so the whole idea is that there's no such thing as bad weather. Like it's never too cold. It's never too wet. It's just, you have to Mm -hmm. dress appropriately so that you can get outside. Right. Well, and when you're in those types of environments, like the winter clothes that they sell are better equipped for that weather. Um, We cannot find decent winter clothes down here. Like we have to buy stuff when we're visiting Ohio to bring back to us because even the sweaters and things down here are so, so thin. And I mean, they're not expecting anyone in Florida to work outside apparently. So, (laughs) (laughs) so, I mean, nobody, like even the sweaters that we've got, you know, nobody's wearing those outside for any length of time. I mean, it's, it's not even like they're thinner than sweatshirts. So right. um, yeah, that's another thing though, is like today's clothes really aren't as warm as, you know, the things that you can find at like thrift shop, like old wool coats and, you know, those types of things, because almost everything's made out of a plastic fiber. So they're yeah, not as well, warm and, as natural fibers you know, you've are. Got, you've got folks that are buying most of their clothes from Walmart. Right. Um, and even, and I, I mean, as in, Okay, I will say I buy a lot of clothes from Kohl's and even those clothes aren't very good quality. Uh, but I mean, people will brag about Target and I'm like, I'm sorry, the Target clothes are like only a minuscule level above the Walmart clothes. Um, and they're just, they're trying to make them out of the cheapest fabric possible. So even if it's cotton, they're making it out of the thinnest cotton they can and it's right. still, you know, look decent. So regardless of, and I mean, and that can, you can buy stuff that's made in the USA and it's still made out of cheap, ultra thin cotton that is going to wear a hole in itself in six months. If so it d- doesn't even, right. So it doesn't <laughs> even matter like where it's coming from. It's just a matter of the actual quality of the materials that went into it. Right. Now, granted, it does seem like slightly better stuff comes out of Europe, but that's another story. I think Europe also kind of has higher standards for, <laughs> for everything. Um, so yeah, but well, and you know, of course, this podcast is supposed to be about being less busy. So um, we're not saying that we need to, you know, work ourselves to the bone all winter long just to stay moving either. Um, <laughs> no, but, but movement, a- incorporating movement and being outside should be a right. day. It's not necessarily that you're, you're not busy at that point. You're just, you know, you're, you're taking care of yourself. Right. Even if all you're doing is part of your, and I'm not saying this needs to be like, four o'clock in the morning routine, but I am, <laughs> I have decided that now that I am retired from the military, I am seeing the, as the fewest number of 4 a.m. mornings possible. <laughs> um, I saw one this morning, but that was because I literally did not sleep last night. Um, anyway, where was I going with that? Um, <laughs> but once the sun has come up a little bit higher, and it is not like Nanook of the North Cold. Go outside and just take a nice walk outside. Just enjoy the outdoors, enjoy nature. Um, you know, I, like I love, well, yeah, I mean, you guys still have songbirds. Or at least you guys have some birds up there. Winter is when we see all of our songbirds. So that's when I'll tend to put out my bird feeders and stuff like that. And we have like the cardinals and the, and the finches and stuff that come around. But I know even up North, we had, a lot of songbirds that we would put feed out for and just just being outside and just enjoying those birds and enjoying the feel of the wind oh goodness I can't talk feeling the wind you know on your face on your skin it's gonna burn your lungs a little bit but guess what that's actually really good for you and once you get used to it it actually feels really good and then you go inside and you have like a cup of hot chocolate you know then then you can go inside and get cozy by the fire but um if you don't have frostbite on your nose you're good (laughs) Right. Which, I mean, if I've got frostbite in Florida, I've got bigger problems, but um, that's, I mean, and that's what wonderful scarves are for. Uh, And I mean, it's winter is a nice season because it is, it is a season for slowing down. Mm -hmm. It is a season for, you know, this is the time when we kind of come indoors, we do our mending, we do, you know, like we focus on the, the inside stuff. Um, I don't know what it is. And probably because it's so got awful hot in the summertime I can't even imagine trying to knit anything but um I love to knit in the wintertime and it's like the only time of year that I can really 
get into it where my brain kind of slows down enough where I can allow myself to just sit there and knit and not constantly be bouncing around thinking about all the other things that I should be doing, should be up and doing. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of other things that we can do to slow down, but still kind of pass the time and keep occupied. And Right. And the, knitting actually really helps with my anxiety. Yeah. I, I like to get outside even on the really, really cold mornings, just because it's actually kind of refreshing. And it, I don't know, it kind of, it grounds you and it, it's right. cold, but then, you know, I'm going to get to go into a nice warm house in another 10 or 20 minutes. So it's not right. like it's, you know, it's not forever. It's not permanent. So maybe that's part of it. And I know up here, my, my mom, she had really, really bad seasonal depression, like terrible. Mm -hmm. So full spectrum lights are a good thing. Right. Yeah. You can actually get like those daylight lamps. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I would usually um, supplement with vitamin D, um, like vit you know, pills, vitamins when I lived up in Ohio. Yeah. I haven't really noticed a need for it down here, but Another thing that I think helps, even though it's kind of counterintuitive because you're not getting vitamin D is uh, avoiding artificial light and using natural light, like candles and, you know, oil lamps or whatever, maybe um, in the evenings, especially, or, you know, first thing in the morning when it's still dark because it doesn't get daylight till nine and it gets dark at four, but um, <laughs> the, the natural light. I, I'm is sorry. I'm sorry. What's the incentive for living in Indiana again? <laughs> I missed that part. <laughs> We have snow. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, trust me, my daughter is, can we move to Ohio? I want snow. I'm like, no, <laughs> just, just no. <laughs> but when you use those uh, natural lights, like candlelight and stuff like that, it doesn't mess. It doesn't have that blue light. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mess with your circadian rhythms. And if your circadian rhythm is off, then, you know, that can affect your mood too, because then you're not sleeping as soundly. You're not, you know, you're not sleeping as well. And another thing is turn off your Wi-Fi at night believe it or not, that stuff actually messes I, with us. Yeah. And you know, and you say that and I'm like, you know, I, I've heard that like numerous times and I still forget to do it. Um, like I, and I really, I shouldn't be sleeping with my phone by my bed either. Um, that's something no. I really get out of, cause I did set up a charging station in the kitchen. And the idea is, you know, we can charge everything in the kitchen. Um, and I, I need to, I need to get back to doing that. Cause since I have my VAs and they're in the Philippines. Usually as soon as I wake up in the morning, I'm letting them know I'm awake and then I'm checking to see if they have any questions or if they need anything for me. And, you know, so it's like, I'm literally grabbing my phone as soon as I open my eyes. And that's a really, really bad habit. That's a terrible habit. That's another thing. Instead of doing that, you can light a candle. Don't, don't grab your phone, take a candle, just a taper candle and just light I it and, do and let the natural light. We'll see then, but you can let the natural light kind of. I'm going to burn my house it. down. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should put a disclaimer <laughs> in this episode. <laughs> if you have a four year old that sleeps in your bed with you and he tends to flail his appendages, <laughs> you might not want to have a lit candle next to your bed. <laughs> Don't leave burning candles unattended. <laughs> I'll, I'll put one on the kitchen stove and it can burn in there. <laughs> But it can well, be also helpful. speaking of, yeah, speaking of natural light, um, really like pulling back our curtains and letting more of the sunlight come in during the day too. Right. Because um, like darkness in general can really affect our moods. And so mm -hmm. just to brighten up a space and, you know, let that light in, um, even, you know, if it's not like super, super cold out, and even if it is super, super cold out, some people, you know, like it, but crack a window and let some of that air come in. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, crack them on opposite ends of the house. So you actually get some airflow and stuff like that. Uh, so that even if you're indoors, you're still, you're getting that fresh air, you're getting that sunlight and it, it really can make a big difference on your mood. Right. We, we try to uh, open our windows, even if it's just for, you know, like 10 minutes, at least once a week, just to kind of air the house out. And mm -hmm. cause it gets, it gets hot in here anyway, cause we're using wood. So, oh Yeah. Well, and I know um, the wood's also going to dry out the air a lot too. So, well, we um, put a pot of water on a lot of times to yeah, kind of humidify say, the air, something to humidify. Mm -hmm. Which we can actually, also help we, your we mood. One of our windows yesterday, yeah. Um, also help cut down on nosebleeds. But <laughs> no, yeah, not too. Um, we did, but yeah, we did open a window yesterday, uh, and then we had to like do a head count, and make sure all the cats were still in the house. But 
Uh, you don't have a screen in your window? Um, no, because I have cats. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have any either, but. <laughs> Over time, I mean, granted, we have, we still have all the screens. They just need to be repaired. That's but how our lawyers are. What has happened to all of the screens all over our house over the years is the cats would figure out what we're, room we're in. And when the outside cats wanted fed, they would launch themselves at the window or the screen door or whatever screen they could find, launch themselves at the screen and just hang there until we acknowledged them and came out and fed them. So that's why we don't have screens anymore. This is why we can't have nice things. Our house was a foreclosure, not when we bought it, but our neighbors actually own this house. So they sold it to us, but when they bought it, it was foreclosure. And so all the screens are like ripped down the middle where somebody tried to break into our house. Oh, wow. Yeah. All of them. There's even a square cutout of one in our garage. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) No, when we bought our house, um, one house that we looked at was a foreclosure and I don't know if it was the bank or the previous owners or whatever, but they went through and any fixture that could be worth anything they took it out and replaced it with like the cheapest thing they could find at Lowe's. So you'd have this painted door that you could tell used to have a really nice, like kind of classy. Right. (laughs) Well, I mean, the the door was still there, but you could tell like it used to have a, like a nice door fixture kind of thing, you know, and in its place is just like a little cheap brass doorknob. (laughs) Probably the people that live there. Because they Maybe. knew they're going to lose the house. I don't know. We've yeah. gone in foreclosures that have nothing in them. Like they pulled all the counters and the cabinets and the kitchen sink and everything. Right. Out. Well, and this one, I think they even pulled up all the carpet out of this one. Like, it, I mean, it was, it was gutted and it, the property had a lot of issues anyway, which is why we didn't buy it. But um, we also, there were, there was a house we looked at that it had been a rental and I'm pretty sure just the people that were renting it knew that it was getting sold out from underneath them. So they just like trashed it and didn't care. Oh, geez. So that's kind of how I ended up with my cat. Not, not from that, but from somebody else who was a renter, the house was being sold. And so like they just the cat, out. the cat got left behind for the next person. Um, and the house just, I, I don't know, I guess the house is a, is a disaster. The, I kind of kept in touch with the lady who bought it because she wanted to make sure that, you know, the cat went to a good home. Right. And um, she's like, I regret buying this place. She's like, there's so much more work that needs to be done that we had no idea. That sucks. That sounds like homeownership. <laughs> well, right. Well, and there, um, I mean, honestly, it's like, it was an old trailer in like a little trailer park on the South side of town. That's not known for being the great neighborhood or greatest neighborhood to begin with. Right. And um, they bought it so that their disabled son could like have his own house and be independent. And you know, oh. so it was for, it was supposed to be for him to move into, but like he's, he's got asthma in addition to whatever else. Like I, I think he's autistic and had some other issues going on too. And so they needed to just like completely clean out the house, get rid of all the old carpet, get rid of the window fixtures, you know, make sure there wasn't anything that was going to set off his asthma. Um, but I think they ended up getting in there and realizing there was like, like water damage and wood that needed to be replaced and, which i mean we ran into that with our place too because these manufactured houses are not sealed well and so we we already replaced the front door and the front entryway um the back door that is our like our main door that we use that whole frame needs to be replaced and and that the floor there the problem is we have to actually move like our washer and dryer out in order to replace the floor. And it's just going to be a huge, big, my husband kind of started the project and then just laid um, plywood over it until he can deal with it at a later time, which is never going to happen. But, um, and then more than likely we have the same situation going on with our sliding glass door that doesn't actually slide because you can tell that the floor by it is kind of getting soft. So our slide, our sliding glass door is the only one because our deck has a roof on it, so it's covered. So it's the only one that mm. doesn't have damage. We replaced the front door and the floor around it and had to fix part of the rim joist because of where it had leaked. So we like added some support to it. And then the same thing with our main back door, which is actually on the side of our house. We had to fix mm-hmm. it and we had to move our washer and dryer and all that fun stuff. Replace all the subfloor, replace <laughs> part of the floor joist. Oh yeah. Speaking of not being busy. Um, yes. <laughs> We bought our house um, 14 years ago, 14 and a half years ago. And 
it didn't have any gutters on it. And there's no like roof overhang or porch or awning or anything over any of the doors. So we knew that the back door is probably going to be our main entrance because it like is right by where we parked the car. Um, but you come up and you come up these stairs and the, wa- the water from the roof is just dumping on your head while you're trying to unlock the back door. So I told so- my husband 14 years ago, we need gutters and we need an awning over this door. I still do not have gutters or an awning over that door. Uh, so we were actually at Lowe's last week, or I was at Lowe's with the kids. And, and the only thing worse than me going to the garden center is me going to the lumber center. And so I was, I was looking for brackets because um, I made, when I made all my raised beds, we made them out of uh, cypress wood. So it wouldn't rot as easily which was great. The cypress wood is still holding out great, but we used um, like, I think they're oak and they were just like one by ones or two by twos or something like that on the inside corners. And we drilled into those. Those have completely rotted out. So now my cypress boards are just popping off my raised beds and I need to figure out a different way to like piece my raised beds back together (laughs) so I can grow something. So I found these metal corner brackets that are probably way heavier than what I need, but they are going to do the job and I'm going to drill them into the corners. <laughs> what I love is I buy all this stuff. It's sitting in the back of the car. Two days later, my husband goes, so what's the hardware for? I'm like, I have a new project. Um, but, <laughs> and he just, he rolls his eyes at me, but um, <laughs> they have kits like to make your own um, arbor and all this kind of stuff. Like all you have to buy is the wood and they've got the like the black wrought iron looking hardware that then you drill into the wood and put it all together. I'm like, Oh, I've got ideas. So while we're there, the gutters are right there. And I'm like, you know, gutter prices really aren't that bad. Did you I pay gutters? I, no, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Cause I was out of money, but <laughs> like my kids are dragging me out of the lumber section because they're like, we're not buying gutters today. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to have gutters on my, on my house sometime before the rainy season starts back up. It's, you know, it's one of those things, like I keep telling myself, I don't want to invest a lot of money into this house because this house was only ever supposed to be temporary. We were going to build a conventional built house. Yeah, I know. We're going to build a <laughs> conventional house on the property. And like the further we get in this whole process, I'm like, <laughs> we're stuck in this house until the day we die. So I'm sure. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, I wonder if I could enclose the front porch and turn it into another bedroom. Eh. Yep. Yeah. I asked Trevor if we could uh, add on to the side so that we could connect our garage mm-hmm. and maybe we could put a root cellar in the add on. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> the only manufactured house in Indiana with its own root cellar. Yes. Um, I can't even have a basement or root cellar in Florida. So not unless I put a sump pump. Um, yeah, we need a sump pump. We just have a crawl space, but we still need a sump pump. Yeah. Our, I, I have to check with Matt. I don't even know what our, what our well depth is. I know. Um, I mean, it's just the whole state has high water tables, but we are on a hill. So maybe it's a little bit better. Um, Cause we kind of got into mine, this whole conversation. A, of 133 feet deep, but we hit water at 40 foot. That's not too bad. So yeah, yours is kind of high too. Um, yeah. I need, yeah, because I've been, you know, researching like hand pumps for the well on and off. And I got to look and see if like, if we can find one that we could attach to our well um, that will also like reach that depth and whatever. But I don't know how far down we have to go to actually hit water. I know where, wherever the well is currently, we have really good water. But with Florida, if you don't, like <clears throat> if you go too high, then you get into like a sulfur pocket and it's gross. Oh, that's what, yeah, we, we had that problem. Um, the house I rented in Tampa, uh, the, the water was decent. It wasn't the best, but it was, you know, drinkable. And then they decided to redo the well and my landlord was cheap. So he didn't want to drill it as deep as it was originally. And so the second well ended up hitting a sulfur pocket and I could not drink the water. Like I would walk into my house and it smelled like my dog pooped in my house and it was just oh. the water. Suck. So yeah, it was bad. Um, anyway, 
But so yeah. home ownership will keep you busy. So don't own a home. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, and you know, and the thing is, so I will like, I, I am constantly finding projects that I want to do. But then of course I completely overwhelm myself with the size of a project because I don't think about, you know, how big it is when I start. Um, so biting off small pieces is really helpful. Um, you know, not trying to take on too much. And then also for me, I will like hyper fixate on something. And so I will like let everything else around me fall by the wayside while I just do this one thing and try to like see it all the way through to completion. Meanwhile, the world is burning around me. So right. that doesn't help anybody. Um, no. And it messes with your mood. It does. Because then you feel like you, the number, the, I think the number one problem is you feel like you avoided all this other stuff and then you feel crappy because you didn't do any of the other things. And the other thing is you get overwhelmed with whatever the project is because it's too big and it's too much and you didn't take off little pieces and it just puts you in a pissy mood. So, yeah. Well, and I'll say, um, not necessarily when it comes to like home improvement stuff, although this really applies to anything, but I will bite off more than I can chew and it'll be something that I've never done before, but I tell myself I need to push myself outside of my comfort zone so that I can, you know, be a better person, which is great until the imposter syndrome kicks in. And then I'm like laying in my bed in the fetal position because what the heck was I thinking, thinking that I could possibly do this. So, um, so a lot of, I mean, and I'm not saying that's like, I am not the picture of mental health. Let's get that one straight right now. Um, so I think that going into something like that, you have to, you have to set, like set your intention going into it and decide what your mindset is going to be. Decide, you know, what your thought process is going to be. Um, what, you know, what do you want it to make you feel? And if you find yourself, like if, the project is making you angry and you're getting angry at everyone around you because of this thing, then it's time to take a step back and ask yourself why. Right. And, you know, is it you're setting your expectations too high? Are you pushing yourself too hard? You know, have you not communicated with the other people involved in the project to make sure you're on the same page? Um, Cause I think, I think that's really what trips us up more than anything is especially the expectations is, Like we expect everything to go smoothly. We expect everything to be perfect and we expect Mm -hmm. everything to like fall in line on our timeline and go according to plan. And God laughs. laughs. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Like, and it's not, it's, you know, and it's not even that anything has gone wrong. Right. It's It's just just not working the way you wanted it to, or the way you expected it to. Right. It's like, it's just, it's like, look, this is reality. Reality is. Sometimes it takes longer to pull the permit. You know, sometimes you're doing a home improvement project and your kids still want to eat three times a day. So how dare they? (laughs) I know. What are they thinking? (laughs) I was leaving the house today and like, they're all looking at me like, what, what are we eating? I'm like, there's a refrigerator full of food. There's a microwave. Have at it. (laughs) Mom of the year right here. Oh, but anyway, so yeah, it's. We have to kind of like, just take a deep breath. Don't get, you know, don't get so sucked into, well, this isn't what Joanna Gaines would do. Well, Joanna Gaines has a whole team behind her and they're making everything perfect for the camera. So, right. You know, there's a lot more to what, what actually happens than what you see. I mean, just just like Instagram, you know, like everybody records all the perfect stuff and takes the pictures of all the perfect things, but you know. What did it take to get there and how many, you know, how, how many, many kids takes, got, how, how many, many ki- or how many kids got yelled at or how many times did you go ah, and try to pull your hair out because it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes. That, how many dishes yeah. did you create while you, while you made that perfect recipe? Right. And how long, how long did you spend in the kitchen? How long were you cleaning up afterwards? And, right. And did anyone actually eat it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just because it looks pretty doesn't mean that you ate it. Yes. Uh, oh, that happened before it yes. looked really good it even smelled halfway good but then <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah and you talked about vitamin d and supplementing with vitamin d um i think uh uh what is that cod, cod liver oil it tastes disgusting oh, yeah. but it it has vitamin d and vitamin a in it and mm-hmm. it's a really 
readily available vitamin D and vitamin A, and there's other stuff in there too, like omega threes and all that stuff. But I think that it helps the most because it's more soluble. So you actually absorb more of it than, you know, if you just take a pill, I don't think it's necessarily like a big portion that you're not actually going to absorb. And another right. thing is water. Like I oh, find myself. Why do you keep bringing up the water? <laughs> I find myself like when I haven't had enough water, I get really I'm over here drinking crappy. my bean juice. Well, I mean, we can call it water, but it's not. <laughs> it has water in it. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> well, and so I'll say I got really, um, I had a lot of morning sickness with my daughter. I guess I'll start there. And um, I was taking fish oil and uh, got really sick one morning after taking my fish oil and I can't take fish oil anymore. So, um, uh, oh goodness, I can't remember so, the name of so the company the, now. The cod liver oil is off the table for you. Cod, cod liver oil is off the table for me. Um, anyway, there's a Nordic Naturals or something like that. Nordic something. Sounds, sounds um, familiar. Yeah. Uh, so I take their um, Omega supplements. I, um, it's got a few different things in it, but the most important part is it does not taste like fish oil. And it's got the vitamin D in it. Um, although I was talking to my dentist of all things, and he was mentioning that um, it's really good to take vitamin K with your omega vitamin um, because the K actually helps with the absorption and keeps build up out of your arteries or something like that. So um, I guess I'm going to be switching to, yeah, I, I don't know, I'll try anything. Um, Vitamin K so, helps your blood clot. So I don't know what one has right, to do but with this, I, I don't know. I remember he, he was saying like, it, it helps reduce the, the plaque buildup and stuff in the arteries. Um, and then there may have also been something with it, like helping absorption. Uh, I don't know if it was in the bones or in the, I don't know. But um, now all of a sudden, now I'm like, well, crap. I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. I guess I need to Google it. And uh... <laughs> we use uh, Renew Life cinnamon tingle so it doesn't actually taste like color mm. oil but it's still like it's actually like a gel and it, the consistency of it's quite disgusting but interesting i got a um i don't know if it was a cod liver oil it is it, but it's like an omega-3 and it's supposed to be strawberry flavored and i got it for my kids because i just <laughs> Well, because I'm in these, I'm in these like ADHD parenting groups and mm -hmm. every, like there was a bunch of people talking about how much it helped their kids with their focus. So like, all right, I'll give it a try. And, um, I don't know, either I'm pitching the bottle or I'm drinking it myself because all of my kids are like, nope. I mean, they all tried it, but they're like, I'm not drinking any more of that. See, so, this is like a, uh, it's a gel. And so you just take like the kids take like a half teaspoon, I think. I don't know. I have to go in there and look. But anyway, I just scoop it out and put it on the back of their tongue and make them swallow it. Yeah. And they deal with no, it. My, it puts them in a better mood. Big on, well, that's good. My kids could definitely use some more of that. Um, my 11 year old. Oh, my goodness. Anyway. Another story for another day. <laughs> another story for another day. <laughs> my 11 year old was a pain in my ass today. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're hitting that. Um, he pulled the, I can't wait until I move out of this house bit the other day. Oh my. His four-year-old brother like broke his Legos. I'm like, they're Legos. That sounds the like my point kids. of Legos is you can put them back together. Yeah. My, my kids, they get mad at the four-year-old for the same thing. So see, we again live the same, live the same life. life. <laughs> Do you have to constantly tell your kids, hey, guess what? If your Legos weren't all over the floor, he wouldn't keep taking them. Yeah, that's definitely came out of my mouth. And if your Legos weren't all over the floor, then I wouldn't try to break my neck <laughs> because I tripped I, over your I Legos. Have cut, I have a cut on the bottom of one of my toes and I'm pretty sure it's from stepping on a toy. Oh, the bad thing is, is I don't even remember which toy. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so what do we got? We got water and we got water, got vitamin D, fresh air, sunlight. In, in broad um, spectrum, artificial light, if you're going to use, you know, right. like if you don't get enough sunlight, but at the same time, I think natural light helps us regulate our circadian rhythms so that we sleep better, turn off the Wi-Fi, which helps you sleep better. Mm -hmm. I follow this woman on Instagram and they even have a kill switch in their bedroom for all of their bedroom wiring. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
that's dedication. <laughs> no kidding. I'm like, wow, that's, that's involved. I have a space yeah. heater in my bedroom right now, so that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> my only source of heat. Um, well, actually, okay. Speaking of, since, um, you know, this whole podcast is about listening to our bodies and, and our natural rhythms. Um, but using this time, especially because like I was saying, winter time is a time when our minds naturally just kind of slow down and just the world around us slows down. Like it's, you know, every, okay. Unless you live in Florida, um, everything is covered in a blanket of snow, which makes everything quieter. And, you know, it's just everything kind of like hibernates and dies back to, you know, regenerate in a few months. Um, but this is also a really good time to like slow down and listen to your body and kind of get into a rhythm with your body. If you need to, um, and I, and I, I think that's kind of also why like new year's resolutions are so popular is because it is kind of a time to like naturally want to set new goals and kind of try to like be a better person. So if you're trying to set a new routine or something just feels like unbalanced, just taking this time to really figure out like what point in the day do you feel like you have the most energy? What point in the day do you feel like you need to kind of take a step back and relax a little bit? Um, even, you know, look at certain times during the month. Like, do you have certain times during the month where you're feeling more motivated and certain times when you're feeling more like introspective? Um, there's, and, and taking the, that time to also, you know, do some self-care and, and making sure you're taking care of yourself. But have you heard of the bones, no bones? It's more of a TikTok thing. Oh, no. Okay. No. Um, so this has become a thing and I find it hilarious. Um, but at the same time, I'm like one of those things that I'm totally on board with. So there's this guy and his name escapes me right now. He has a 13 year old pug. And every single day, his TikTok channel is literally just, he walks in, he picks up the pug and the pug either wants to stand up and wants to be active and, and run around all day, or he doesn't. And he just wants to lay in his bed and you cannot make him stand no matter what you do. So on the days that he wants to stand up and be active, those are his bones days. And on the days where he just wants to be a sloth all day, those are his no bones days. And this has become like the groundhog of the internet where everyone's like, everyone is basing their energy level for the day off of a 13 year old pug. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, nope, sorry. It's a no bones day. I've got my cozy blanket. I'm going to lay on the couch and watch some Netflix. <laughs> so I'm like, and, and the great thing is, you tell people on TikTok that it is a no bones day and they know what you're talking about. Wow. It's the little things. <sighs> I think you should still get up and move, even if it's a no bones day. That's just me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, well, all right. So yes, even on your no bones days, go out, take your walk, even if it's just 10 minutes. Right. But if you're, and, and don't, don't base your energy level of the day on a 13 year old pug. Um, <laughs> but if your body, if your body is telling you that, all right, today I need to slow down or maybe even like, I, I noticed this actually um, on my way in to record the podcast today is I am feeling a lot more introspective today. And so it's a really good time of the month, I guess I could say. Um, Cause we did kind of touch on. Yeah the whole menstrual cycle thing last, right. last time. But um, so I'm actually, I'm going into my luteal phase, which is a good time for analyzing data, doing planning, um, just kind of like being more quiet and reflective uh -huh. and not like, I don't need to use a lot of like extroverted energy right now, except for talking on a podcast. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when you, like when you take the time to really pay attention to your body and what your body is telling you, then you'll find that you still have time to do all the things, but you don't need to do all the things every single day. Right. You, you know, you, you do the stuff that you have the energy for on the days you have the energy for it. And on the days you don't have the energy for it, you do the stuff that takes less energy or takes, you know, a different kind of energy. 
Right. But that doesn't mean mindless scrolling on TikTok. <laughs> well, that's called, that's called buffering. And we'll talk more about that when we talk more about mental health. Well, I was going to say, you know, like, inst- I think another thing that can help boost your mood, especially um, and during this time of year is uh, keeping the screens off, you know, find a book or knit or, you know, do something with your hands, you know, do something that's going to exercise your mind. That's not just, you know, mindless scrolling, because then we get into comparing ourselves to all the perfection that we see on the internet, which puts us in a crummy mood or a lot of times it can, because you're like, oh, well, she has whatever it may be. And I don't have, or she must have, you know, like perfect angelic children because they let her, you know what I mean? So (laughs) then we get into the whole comparison thing. And even, even if it's not necessarily the comparison thing, um, when you start relying on being entertained, Mm -hmm. then you like your brain is constantly looking for that dopamine. Right. And so like, it's, it, and it gives you less opportunities to quiet your mind and listen to your thoughts. And like, and I mean, and we see it with our kids and yet we don't really pay attention to ourselves as adults, but you know, like we're constantly telling our kids it's okay to be bored. Right. Like you, you need to spend some time being bored. Mm-hmm. It's not the end of the world. It's not going to kill you. But then ourselves, we like, we constantly have to have noise. We listen to the radio on the way to work. We, you know, have the radio playing or we're talking to coworkers or whatever the whole time we're at work. We're listening to the radio the, or, or a podcast or an audio book or something on the way home from work. We get home from work, we sit down, we turn on the TV <laughs> and we continue right. that right up until we go to bed and then we can't sleep. Um, so yeah, we need, we need those quiet times. And I mean, even if you're reading a book, that's a different kind of entertainment than like watching TV or listening to stuff. Um, because, I mean, I know I will sit there and I'll read a book, but I've got like the whole world is playing out inside of my mind. And so I'm still like, I'm using those brain cells. Right. Exactly. It's completely different than, you know, just sitting and watching TV because the story is already, you know, it's playing out for you visually and right. probably versus if you read a book, then. And that's what it's only using like a certain part of your brain. The rest of your brain just tunes out. Right. And that part of your brain doesn't get used if you're just watching mind numbing television or scrolling on Instagram or, you know, whatever it may be. And my, my, my final point is uh, diet. I think yes, because we, we just came off of the holidays, especially. So a lot of people overindulged in sugar and things like that. And sugar can definitely mess with your dopamine response and yes. make you crummy because you're coming off your sugar high. So you know, eat, eating better food, less sugar, like our, our three month long perceptual or per- perpetual sugar high that like started before Halloween and like went straight through till new year's. Yes. Yeah, but we call that flu season. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, shit. another story for another day. <laughs> On a semi-related note, I <laughs> screwed up a batch of fudge. And so now my husband is just like, Oh, you have to try again. Darn. So you, you didn't, didn't do eat chocolate your fudge? Next time. Oh, no, I'm still eating it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's more the consistency of taffy than fudge. So oh. you kind of have to eat it with a fork. I've never had okay. taffy fudge, but hey. It's just, it's just soft and sticky. That's all. I mean, it still tastes great. Right. It's just, I don't think, I don't think we boiled it long enough. So oh. I need to actually pull out the candy thermometer and do it the right way. Yeah. It just drives me nuts when like you see these super easy fudge recipes that don't tell you what temperature to put it at. I have a foolproof one, but it's, it's not really fudge. It's more like chocolate. It probably doesn't use marshmallow. (laughs) No, but it's just, uh, it's chocolate and uh, sweetened condensed milk. And that's basically it. That's it. Oh, wow. All righty then. Oh, vanilla. It was my mom's recipe. I don't know. She used to make it. It's chocolate and (laughs) I like it, even though it's not really fudge. Cause it's super easy. I don't need a candy thermometer. I just melt chocolate and put some milk in it and call it. A day. <laughs> I think we call that ganache. <laughs> yeah. 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 Although I don't know, I've got a ganache recipe that I put on top of a cheesecake and it's uh, cream. It's not sweet and condensed milk. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And it, when it cools, it's actually hard. Hmm. 
interesting. So it's not, you know, it's not quite the consistency of ganache because it's more like, I don't know. It's like the consistency of the chocolate chips before I melted them. <laughs> it's it's so much almost like, but it's not like, it's not tempered. It's actually, it's still kind of no. soft. Yeah. Interesting. Don't ask me. She got it out of some, like, probably like Woman's Day magazine back in like 1985. So, <laughs> right, <laughs> right up there with 100 ways to use Vienna sausages. There you go. <laughs> she does have a, uh, or she did. I don't know. I think my dad still has all her recipes. She had a peanut butter fudge and it used uh, marshmallow fluff. So, mm-hmm. well, that's what I mean. This is like what everybody swears by. Um, I just, I think I have to find a slightly more foolproof recipe that uses marshmallow fluff i'll have to see if my dad has her recipe yeah because i've i've i have tried non-marshmallow fluff fudge recipes and they came out even worse than this like and what's really bad is a big reason why i went to culinary school to learn baking and pastry was so i could learn more like sugar work we never did any sugar work so you could make more sugary things I see nothing wrong with that scenario. Okay. Like, but I, that was not the point of what I just said. Now was it? <laughs> I just said to lay sugar. Off sugar. <laughs> all right, fine. Okay. So, well, all right, let's turn it back around a little bit. Um, one thing with, with winter and eating is that we don't necessarily have the availability of like the fresh vegetables and things that you would typically think of when you think of eating healthy. So um, one thing is like, there's a reason why we always crave like soups and things like that in the winter. And soups are a great way to eat healthy and also to incorporate more vegetables, um, especially if you have like dehydrated vegetables or freeze dried vegetables around. But also um, if you have that sweet tooth that you're trying to appease, uh, you can, you know, we have the winter squashes that, you know, store really well through the winter. And if you grew like a butternut or an acorn squash or something like that over the summer, you probably have a lot of them available to you now. Um, Or, I mean, they're also really the, just about the cheapest thing you can get at the grocery store right now. I know our, most of our squash are only like 99 cents a pound right now. So, um, you know, really kind of focus on those things that are like seasonally available. And um, I know, you know, everyone's seasons are going to be a little bit different. So down here i am eating fresh lettuce and things but um you and can you can always also those things indoors well right yeah that's the other thing i was gonna say is you can do like baby greens in a small tray on your kitchen counter you can do microgreens you can do sprouts like sprouts are super easy and it's a great way to add extra protein to just about anything i mean you can put them on top of a salad but you can also put them like on a sandwich or something like that um adds a little bit of flavor as well as the protein but um, so yeah, there's, there's different, there's different things that we can do to eat healthy, but trying, try to stay away from the processed stuff and kind of cleanse our bodies from all of the comfort food that we've been partaking in. Oh, well, well, another thing, since you're talking about seasonality is that's why, uh, hunting and like butchering pigs and cows and all this stuff. Part of the reason that they did it in the winter or the late fall rather was not mm-hmm. only so it could stay cold and there weren't flies, but also because, We need all of that fat and protein that we get from meat that you can't really, I'm sorry, you can't get it from a vegetable. Well, and also they didn't want to have to feed those animals through the winter because there was no hay available. I mean, there's lots and lots (laughs) of reasons, but part of the reason is because, you know, naturally we need those, you know, that added fat Mm -hmm. and fat is not a terrible thing. Anybody that says it is, is crazy. I'm glad the research is finally catching up. Although actually getting like Western medicine to catch up to the research is going to be a whole different story, but there is more information coming out about the health benefits of animal fat and how it's actually far better for us than, um, than the vegetable fats. And also like we're talking about like vitamin D deficiencies, that is a fat soluble vitamin, right? We get our fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K from animal fat and eggs. That's where those vitamins are stored in the body. So eating more of that is also going to help us get more of those vitamins and the protein is going to give us more energy for a longer period of time. Right. So, and you know, I mean, carbs aren't all bad either. I do a lot of bread baking in the winter too. Yeah. Yeah. We do too. I'm, I'm trying to slowly, but surely 
get away from the carp train a little bit more, but it's Christmas. So. I need to, I need to <laughs> right. Well, not by the time this episode airs. But, well, yeah, um, but you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I need to actually like get back into doing my sourdough and stuff. Cause I really miss my like sourdough ciabattas and those nice, like crunchy breads that had some nice. Texture. And that's so much better for you than just having, you know, just a loaf right. of bread that was made with yeast and mm-hmm. not, not fermented before it was created. Yeah, sourdough yes. is a lot better for you. Well, and that's also something that we can focus on in the winter too, is like um, fermented vegetables. Yes. Because I, they're going to store well and it's going to replenish us with a lot of those probiotics. Right. And the stuff that you canned, you know, if you canned anything, mm-hmm. like we eat a lot of uh, venison chili mm-hmm. with our canned juice and canned tomatoes and canned beans or our dried beans if I want to cook them off. But usually I end up canning them because it's quicker. Right. If I've already got them ready than trying to cook beans down for three days. <laughs> I know. Like I, um, I went through a phase where I was stocking up on dried beans and, uh, I never use them because I don't take the time ahead. Of, like, or I don't, not that I don't take time. Um, I don't plan far enough ahead to right. soak the beans right. before I cook them. That's um, why I can them because I'll forget like, Oh, I didn't soak them. And really you shouldn't, yeah. you can eat beans without soaking them. Like people make them in their pressure cookers or instant pots and stuff, but it's not really a good idea. You should soak them. Yeah. Um, and I know, I mean, even at culinary school, we would cook them without soaking them, mainly because we didn't have, like our kitchen classes were not, you know, we're there on Thursday, then we're there again on Friday or something like that. Like we had to right. cook start to finish during that one class period. Right. So we would do beans um, without soaking, but we just, it's like, all right, it's going to take a lot longer doing them this way than if they were already soaked ahead of time. So. Right. Well, it helps get out some of those anti-nutrients if you soak them, especially if you add just a little bit of acid to your water when you're soaking them. It's part of the reason that we we dump that water off and then start with fresh water when we cook them. Um, but also something about like, they're not recommended for doing the pressure cooker because this one, and it's only a certain kind of bean. And now I'm like, I don't remember if it was kidney beans or something else. It's escaping me right now. But um, it puts off like some kind of a poison or, or something along, like something that'll upset your stomach. Not like. Hmm. Yeah, I know water. what you're talking about, but I can't think of what bean it is either. <laughs> yeah. Soak your beans. <laughs> yeah, soak your beans. <laughs> Um, or candy beans so that you don't have to worry. Right. Well, but you soak them before you can them. So, well, that's true. Um, but it's still, if, if they're like, when you're doing that process, you're doing it for the purpose of like meal prep. Right. But if you are like living your day to day and you forget to put your beans four, in the bowl, right? Yep. It's four thirty <laughs> and your kids are starving. Then it's a lot easier to just pull that can out of the cupboard and right. dump it in, heat them up. Yeah. Right. Yep take care of yourselves. Um, you know, it's January tends to be a rough month for everybody. Um, we're coming off of the highs and lows of the holidays. Um, this is when we tend to see the most, um, the most depression in general, but I'm sure seasonal depression has a lot to do with it just because it is so dark and cold and gross, but, um, you know, do some, do some self-care, do some self-love, take care of yourself, listen to your body, get into that rhythm, um, you know, take this time to really kind of set your intention for the year and it's going to be a great one. Welcome to 2022. I can't get much worse. Right. And to close, I think that we should, uh, remind people that if you are feeling down and depressed that you should reach out. Obviously if you're, if you need it, there is the suicide helpline. Um, but I know, you know, a lot of folks go through this. I'd go through it myself and it's always like, I'm, I'm not suicidal. I don't want to hurt myself, but, uh, you shouldn't have to struggle either. Right. Um, you know, mom life is hard. Being a woman is hard. And so, you know, you need your tribe. You need people to talk to, um, you need people that have kind of, you know, got your back and will listen to you. So worst case, if you need it, we've got our Facebook groups, uh, the self-sufficient life and not so modern living. We've got our Patreon community. Um, you know, but hopefully you also have someone local to you who can, who you can sit down with, go get a cup of coffee, glass of wine. Um, and just, just know that you're not alone during this season because it is just a season. It will pass. It will get better. 